Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Caitlin and on this channel I upload all sorts of content relating to true crime, education and psychology related topics. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy and you haven't already then please do hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on your little notification bell so you know whenever I upload a new video. So for today's video we're going to be discussing another unsolved disappearance case and today we're going to be discussing that of Paige Renkowski. So before we get started I'm just going to zoom through my usual disclaimer that I like to include at the start of all my videos, just letting you guys know that I'm not claiming to be an expert in this case or any of the other cases that I cover over on my channel. I'm simply relaying the information I'm able to find myself through research of certain sources on the internet and because only certain sources are accessible to me it means I may get things wrong, leave things out or mispronounce things. I apologise if I do any of those things. I'm not trying to cause anyone any harm or an injustice. I'm simply working with the information that I have available to me. So with all that being said, let's just go ahead and get started discussing the case of Paige Renkowski. Paige Renkowski was born on the 2nd of February in 1960 in a place called the DeWitt Township in Michigan, meaning that she would be 61 years old this year. At the time of her disappearance, Paige was working as a substitute teacher. She had blonde hair, blue eyes and evidence of previous surgeries, including a replacement in her right knee, two surgical screws in her left knee and a surgical scar on her right arm. On the 24th of May 1990, 30-year-old Paige Renkowski was driving her mother to the Detroit Metro Airport in her silver 1986 Oldsmobile Cutlass Calais and after doing so, she then started the journey back to her home in Lansing. Some sources stated that Paige had plans to meet a female friend of hers in Canton to have lunch after dropping her mother off on her way home and this friend had said that the lunch went well and nothing had occurred that seemed out of the ordinary. From here she was allegedly planning on driving to the softball game where her fiance was playing and this should have only taken her about 30 minutes in total. It's known that while driving home, she made a stop on the westbound shoulder of Interstate 96 around a half a mile away from Fowlerville, Michigan exit. And this stop had been placed at around 3.30pm that day and there had been a sighting of Paige following this. This last known sighting of Paige Renkowski was on this shoulder of the road and she had been spotted talking to two unidentified men. They had all been standing near a minivan that was either burgundy or maroon in colour and the only descriptions of the men that could be given, since the witness was just passing through the scene, had been that they were African American. The witness report stated that there may have been a third man seen somewhere either near the van or inside but the details of this weren't clear. Described that the witness had seen Renkowski speaking with these two men and that she was seen gesturing frequently, even at one point throwing both of her hands up in the air. Following this, one of the unidentified men had reached out and placed his hand on her shoulder. And this same witness had driven past the spot where he had previously seen Paige and the men, and this had been at around 7.30pm, approximately four hours after this initial sighting. They thought something was strange when they noticed the vehicle, which was later confirmed to be Paige's car, still in the same spot. The witness had called the local authorities to report this unusual finding, and officers were sent out in search of this vehicle to establish the situation. They found no sign of anyone near the car and, assuming it was abandoned, they peeked inside. They discovered that the keys were still in the ignition as well as all of the lights and the radio inside the car being on. The doors to the car were all unlocked and the engine was idling as well as the officers finding a bag, a wallet and shoes inside the car, later all confirmed to have belonged to Paige. And interestingly, the authorities had also found an open bottle of beer inside the car, but nothing else that they could find suggested what had happened, including the fact that there wasn't any damage to the car, suggesting that there had not been any form of collision that had caused her to pull onto this shoulder. And past this unusual sighting of Paige on the shoulder of the road speaking to these two unidentified men, she was never seen again. When the authorities had started to look into Paige's background in an attempt to seek out any leads and potential answers for her disappearance, her family had initially shared their opinion on the last sighting of her. They seemed unable to figure out whether these unidentified men were connected to Paige in any way, but appeared adamant that she would have stopped and engaged with someone if they were familiar with her. It is worth noting that it cannot be confirmed whether these men that she was last seen speaking to were in fact involved in her disappearance, but regardless, authorities were still actively seeking out these men as they may have had some sort of information on her last known movements. 
During their investigation, authorities had also heard some reports that she may have been having some relationship struggles with her fiancé. Paige and her fiancé were allegedly due to be married in November of that year, and despite these claims of potential relationship issues, her fiancé was ruled out as being involved, as well as them ruling out the possibility of her having leaving her relationship voluntarily as an explanation for her disappearance. The possible scenario of her having run away voluntarily seemed less and less likely when the authorities discovered that she had deposited a large amount of money into her bank account in the week before her disappearance and this hadn't been touched following her disappearance. They also found no evidence of any planned trips in Paige's records either and so the likeliest scenario remained that she had met with foul play. Something that is interesting to note is the multiple reports of people impersonating police officers around the time of her disappearance, as well as a few other unsolved disappearance and murder cases occurring in that area at the same time. There have been multiple reports of some individuals having shown fake badges to passing drivers in order to get them to pull over. It's obviously not known if this is something that occurred in relation to Paige's disappearance, but it is obviously considered as a possible scenario. After a few years, the investigators appeared to have no luck in finding any solid leads on Paige's whereabouts or who could have been involved, and it remained a cold case until it was officially reopened by the investigators in the late 1990s. In May of 2001, it was announced that an inmate in Michigan prison was listed as a suspect in Paige's disappearance, although the individual was never publicly named. It was known though that this individual was serving prison time for carjacking and the incident had occurred just a few weeks after Paige's disappearance, as well as the victim of this crime being female. It's believed that this man had been interviewed multiple times by the police over the course of their investigation and it was believed that he had possibly been one of the men that she was spotted talking to prior to her disappearance. However, this could never be confirmed as the witness had not been able to gain a good enough description of the individuals at the time. This inmate had allegedly been asked to take part in a lie detector test, but once he was found to have passed it and due to the apparent lack of evidence connecting him, the authorities had ruled him out as a suspect. Investigators had publicly released a set of six sketches depicting men possibly believed to be suspects in the case of Paige Renkowski's disappearance, and these men have yet to be identified. It was discovered that in 1999, a tip was sent in to the Michigan State Police Detective in person in the form of a letter and a map. The anonymous tip has stated that the map would lead to the discovery of Paige's remains in a specific area of woodland. But this tip wasn't officially followed up on until 2011 when cadaver dogs had alerted the authorities of potential human remains in the area. This area of woodland had been private property and the FBI, the local sheriff's department and a number of forensic experts were sent in to start excavating the area. However, nothing related to Paige's case was ever discovered. Some years after Paige's disappearance, an anonymous witness had allegedly come forward and provided a new description of a man believed to be a suspect, and this sketch was sent out to media outlets in the hopes of someone discovering an identity so he could be brought in and questioned. Authorities, to my knowledge, continue to operate under the assumption that foul play was involved in Paige's disappearance. Sadly, Paige's mother passed away without receiving any answers for her daughter's disappearance, but I believe a number of her family members, including Paige's sister, continue to fight for answers, and I do hope that one day some can be found. So that is where I'm going to end today's video. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and don't forget to leave any of your case requests down there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this interesting, and I'll see you guys very soon for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.